We're continuing with the application of IFRS 15, Revenue Recognition. First, let's read the question. Green Inc. delivers 24 boxes of wood flooring to BJB Inc. on account for $120 each on April 2nd, as per their agreed-upon contract signed by both parties. BJB is required to pay within 90 days of delivery. Green allows customers to return unused product in the original packaging for 90 days after the date of delivery for a full refund. The cost of each box, to Green Inc. of course, is $80. Historically, Green Inc. estimates that 8% of all boxes sold are returned and that returned products can be resold to future customers. So they are saleable. Assume that BJB Inc. returned one box on May 30th, but no other boxes were returned. When should revenue be recognized? What would the entries be on April 2nd, May 30th, and July 2nd, the end of the 90-day right of return period? Let's start by applying each step of the revenue recognition process. I'm going to move the page down. Step 1. Identify the contract. I'm going to go through each of the parts of identifying the contract individually. First, Green Inc. and BJB have signed a contract which indicates they are committed to the performance obligations. Second, the goods to be transferred are boxes of wood flooring, so they've been identified. Third, payment terms have been indicated. They're on account payable in 90 days. Third, there is commercial substance because Green Inc.'s economic position will have changed. That's because they're giving up wood flooring in exchange for eventually cash. And finally, collection is probable because there is no indication that BJB will have difficulty paying at the end of the 90 days. In addition, it's not like Green would have signed a contract with BJB if they didn't think BJB could pay. All the criteria are met, so there is a contract. Now, let's move on to step two. I'm going to move the page down. Identify the separate performance obligations. There is only one performance obligation, the delivery of the 24 boxes of wood flooring. Often, students think that the right of return is an other performance obligation, but it's not because the right of return is not distinct or separable from the sale of the wood flooring. The return is dependent on the sale, so the return is not distinguishable from the remainder of the sale. Therefore, it's not a separate performance obligation. So there is only one performance obligation. The delivery and the right of return is all one. Let's move on to step three. Determine the transaction price. The price specified in the contract is $120 per box with 24 boxes sold, $2,880. However, this transaction price is variable due to the customer's right of return. Because customers can return up to 100% of the unused wood flooring, it's true that the actual revenue earned will be variable by customer. I mean, one customer might return 50% and another one returns nothing. So now we have variable consideration. Therefore, Green Inc. must apply the constraining estimates of variable consideration in order to avoid recognizing too much revenue. Remember that Green Inc. had estimated that 8% of all products that are sold will be returned in a saleable condition. So the return is expected to happen the appropriate transaction price must take this into account. We can't recognize the $2,880. We can only recognize the revenue after the constraining estimate. The transaction price on the date of sale will be $2,649.60. Let's move on to step four. Allocate transaction price to the separate performance obligations. This isn't applicable because there's only one performance obligation. Moving on to step five. Recognize revenue when the performance obligation is satisfied. On April 2nd, when Green Inc. delivers the 24 boxes of wood flooring to BJB Inc., that's when control of the wood has been transferred. 
However, just making this statement is not enough. We have to prove that green ink actually transfers control by using identifiers of this transfer. Green ink actually meets multiple identifiers of transferring control. I'm going to go through all of them because this is a teaching opportunity, but remember you only need to use one when you're actually writing a solution to a case or question. First, BJB has an obligation to pay as per the contract terms once the wood has been delivered on April 2nd. Second, BJB Inc. has possession of the wood flooring as of April 2nd. Three, BJB Inc. has legal title of the wood flooring because the contract indicates that legal title has transferred as of April 2nd. Four, the risks and rewards of ownership have transferred on April 2nd because BJB, if they accidentally damage the wood flooring, it'll be their problem, not Green Inc.'s, so they have the risks of ownership. In addition, BJB has the rewards of ownership because they can use the wood as wood flooring or they can sell it to a third party. I'm just going to move the page down. BJB, after delivery on April 2nd, can do anything they want with the wood flooring, so they definitely have all the risks and rewards of ownership. And five, BJB has accepted delivery of the wood flooring on April 2nd which is another indicator of control being transferred. Again, note that I've analyzed all five indicators of the transfer of control on April 2nd, but you're not required to provide an analysis of all of them. You're required to provide an analysis of one of them using case facts. My recommendation is that you always use the risk and rewards of ownership because this is an indicator that fully addresses control. Let's just move the page down. Our conclusion is that there's been a transfer of control. So now let's do our recommendation. Recognize revenue less the right of return estimate on April 2nd. Why? Because it meets all the revenue recognition criteria. Perfect. Let's move forward with the entries.